gentlemen, our show is still in Palm Springs. So let's go out to Jack Benny's house where we find Jack relaxing and reading the local newspaper. Hmm. Look at all these want ads. Here's one from Bullock's store. Wanted floor walker. Must have own carnation. <laughs> hmm. Wanted fry cook. Apply Chi Chi restaurant. Wanted stable boy. Had better have own carnation. <laughs> Hmm. Wanted gardener's helper at Deepwell Ranch. Apply between two and... Oh, this is silly. I'm sure my sponsor will pick up my option. <laughs> but just in case he doesn't. Well, they've got a gossip column here, too. Hmm. Tyrone Power, who was visiting here last week... Imagine that. <laughs> Last night, Pauline Betts, famous tennis player. <laughs> oh, these columnists sure get around. Well, here's something about me. Jack Benny. I did not. <laughs> Imagine saying I went to the post office wearing a bare midriff. <laughs> Just happened that the laundry shrunk my shirt. <laughs> well, that finished the newspaper. Rochester, hand me those pamphlets I got from the Palm Springs Chamber of Commerce. Here you are, boss. Thanks. Hmm, listen to this. Palm Springs, the jewel of the desert, where the warm, radiant sun pours its golden treasure down on the happy and carefree inhabitants. Palm Springs, where the majestic peaks of the San Jacinto Mountains cast their spell of beauty for all to enjoy. You hear that, Rochester? Uh -huh. And just think, Mother Nature gives us all these things free. Yeah, it's a shame Mother ain't running the hotels, too. <laughs> well, Mom's got enough to do. But I like Palm Springs. In fact, I'm thinking of buying a house here. I even asked a real estate man to come over this afternoon. But, boss, property is so expensive down here. I know it is, but if I can find just what I want, I'm willing to go up to $1,500. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> what are you laughing at? $1,500 ain't peanuts. I know, but down here, that's all it'll buy. <laughs> oh, Rochester. Rossi, you're exaggerating. No, I ain't, boss. You know that little house on the corner with the white fence around it? Uh-huh. That just sold for $80,000 and two pounds of butter. <laughs> well, maybe it had it. There's the door. I'll get it. Are you Jack Benny? Yes. Well, I'm Mr. Fulton, the real estate man. Oh, yes, yes. Step right in. Rochester, take his hat, coat, and empty the sand out of his shoes. <laughs> now, Mr. Benny, just what type of house do you have in mind? Spanish, colonial, or French provincial? Well, Mr. Fulton, I think a home should suit the individual. Uh, what kind of a house would fit me? Uh, how about early American? <laughs> No, no, I don't think I'd like early American. How about sold American? Rochester! <laughs> Gee, Mr. Fulton, I don't know what to do. Did you bring your pictures with you? Yes, I did. Now, here's one of me when I graduated from... I college. mean your house! Pictures of your houses. Oh, yes, yes, I always make that mistake. I guess it's because I have a head with seven gables. Oh. And Garson's got every one of them. <laughs> now, look, Mr. Fulton, let's get down to business. Show me some pictures of what you have to offer. Gladly. Now, here we are. Here's a house that ought to interest you, and the price is $40,000. Forty thousand dollars for a house? That's a lot of money. What about the ceiling? And with the ceiling, it'll be sixty thousand. <laughs> Look at that. That's not what I mean. Anyway, it's much too expensive. Oh, not for this house. It has a very novel innovation. A 300-foot spiral banister. You mean a spiral staircase, don't you? No, no, a spiral banister. That's for people who don't drink but want to know how it feels. 
I don't think I'd like that. That bears it save me a fortune. Rochester, please. Show me something else, Mr. Fulton. Have you got a house with a swimming pool? No, but that's no problem. I can build you a tile pool for only $10,000. No, no, I don't want to go that high. Well, I can build you a cement pool for only $2,500. No, no, that's still too high for a swimming pool. Uh, why don't you just dig a hole and hire a tribe of Indians to do a rain dance? <laughs> What's so cheap about that? They're organized, you know. <laughs> anyway, Mr. Fulton, I don't think you have the kind of a house I want. Well, let me show you one more. Here's a beautiful house, and it's only $70,000. Well, it's a lovely place, but $75,000 70, is too much. Uh, anyway, Mr. Fulton, thanks very much for dropping in. Maybe we can talk about it some other time. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. Oh, Mr. Fulton. Yes? Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> what's, the, what's that yellow stuff running out of your pocket? Oh, my goodness, it's butter. I just sold the house on the corner. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, I heard about it. Goodbye, Mr. Fulton. Goodbye. Well, Rochester, I better get down to the Plaza Theater. The broadcast will be on in a few minutes. Say, that reminds me, boss. The manager of the theater called up yesterday. What about? Well, he said, according to the rental contract, when you finish your program, you're supposed to leave and not hang around and watch the picture. <laughs> What's he complaining about? I stand up, don't I? Well, I got to get to the theater. Shall I drive you, boss? No, the wind will take me over today. <laughs> So long, Rochester. Goodbye. Oh, played by Klondike Harris and his sweetest music, This Side of the Yukon. <laughs> and you can have it. <laughs> I sat up all night writing that joke. I'll bet you hated yourself in the morning. Not any more than usual. Say, Phil, Larry Stevens sang that number two weeks ago. How come you repeated it as a band number? Why don't you tend to your comedy and keep your nose out of my business? <laughs> well, it happens to be my business, too. After all, who's the star of this show? I don't know, but when I see my paycheck every week, I know it ain't me. <laughs> oh, stop complaining. You're getting a good salary. What are you talking about? Alice gets more than I do for an autograph. <laughs> And the moral of the story is learn to write. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Hey, Jack, we had to start the show without you. Where have you been? Oh, I'm sorry I was late, Dom. But you see, I'm thinking of buying a house here, and I was detained by a real estate man. Oh, Jack, are you thinking of moving to Palm Springs? Well, I was toying with the idea, Don. You know, I like it here. I've been having so much fun horseback riding, playing golf every day. I played golf this morning, didn't I, Mary? Uh-huh. You know, Don, they got the nicest little nine-hole cords here. You should have seen me this morning on that fourth hole. I put down my ball, picked up my club, and he then... He missed it once, he missed it twice, he missed it once again. It's been a long... Mary! <laughs> Certainly I missed it. You know, it's hard to hit a ball when it's not teed up properly. Well, you wouldn't have that trouble if you buy some tees. Mary, you mean to say that Jack doesn't use tees when he plays golf? No, he waits for a gopher to stick his head out of a hole, and then he puts the ball on his nose. <laughs> Oh, Mary, I play a good game of golf, and you know it. Oh, sure. Tell him what happened on the fifth hole. Nothing happened. I did exactly what my golf teacher told me. I placed the ball in line with my left foot, brought the club over my right shoulder, and wham! He broke his toe. I did not. I killed the gopher. Now, how old four? If he doesn't know the rules, let him keep off the court. <laughs> Anyway, I play a better game of golf than anybody in this gang. I beat Phil the other day. Sure you beat me. Every time you took a nine on a hole, you turned the scorecard upside down before you wrote it in. Well, I could have beat you without that if I hadn't knocked one ball out of bounds. Yeah, and what about that bad slice you made on your first drive? Oh, that wasn't such a bad slice. It wasn't, huh? The ball went 50 yards, made a U-turn, came back and hit you in the stomach. Mary. Then you got so mad you were going to break your club against a tree. Well, what stopped him? When he drew his club back, he saw the price tag on the bottom, so he put it back in his bag. <laughs> you can make up more things. I still say I play a better... G I'll get it. Hello? Say, boss, Mr. Fulton, the real estate man, came back and said they found a few termites in the house so you can have it for 65000 
Termites, huh? Well, Rock says you tell Mr. Fulton that I'm not paying any $65,000 for a house. If he hasn't guessed that by now, he's been out in the sun too long. <laughs> I don't care where he's been. I'm not spending that kind of dough. Would you pay $65,000 for a house in Palm Springs? I wouldn't pay $65,000 for a cabin in the sky. <laughs> well, tell the man. Tell the man. I did. I did. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, the kids, it looks like I'm not going to buy a house here. Anyway, let's get on with the show, because tonight we're going to do a very important sketch. And I want to start casting it immediately. Say, Jackson, I thought you were going to do a sketch next week. We are, Phil. We're going to do a sketch next week, too. And you'll never guess in a million years who our guest star is going to be. Ray Milan. There's no use trying. You'll... Yes, that's who it is, Ray Milan. <laughs> the star of Lost Weekend. And to make him feel at ease, we're having a brass rail put around the microphone. <laughs> Anyway, that's next week. Ray Milland. Gee, I think he's a wonderful actor. I can drink him under the table. <laughs> Phil, with him, it's bread and butter. With you, it's tomato juice and black coffee. <laughs> now, let's get on with the sketch we're going to do tonight. It's a murder mystery, and I'm going to be the chief of police of Palm Springs. Phil, you're going to be my sergeant. And, Don, you're also going to be a member of the force. Well, what am I going to be, Jack? Mary, you're going to play the part of a glamorous movie star who came to Palm Springs to be with her husband. And at the start of the play, he murders you. Oh, Jack, if he murders me, I won't get in laughs. All right, then you murder him. Thanks, Jack. <laughs> now, Larry, Larry Stevens. Yes, Mr. Benny? Uh, you're going to be on the police force, too. Come on, keep moving, keep Not moving. Not yet. Wait till it starts. <laughs> and take off that Hoover button. I'll give you a badge. <laughs> Now, Don, Larry, and Phil, as long as you're going to be on my police force, I'll have to swear you in. And since all you people in the audience will be witnesses, I'll have to swear you in, too. Now, come on, everybody. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. L-S-M-F-T. L-S-M-F-T. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. So round, so firm, so fully packed. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Wait for me! <laughs> With men who know tobacco best, it's Lucky's two to one. With men who know tobacco best, it's Lucky's two to one. Ha, ha, ha. You thought you were getting in for nothing. <laughs> now, all right, kids, this play will go on immediately after a song by... Hold it a minute. Come in. Uh, Mr. Benny, I just talked to the owner, and you can have that house for $50,000. Look, Mr. Fulton, a few minutes ago, you wanted $70,000. Now it's $50,000. Why is the price coming down so fast? Those termites are hungrier than we thought they were. <laughs> well, in that case, I don't want the house. Oh, don't worry about that, Mr. Benny. The termites will be out by tomorrow. How do you know? They're getting so fat. <laughs> They're not going to get fat off of me, so goodbye. Goodbye. Sorry I started looking for a place. Come on, Larry, let's have your song. That was Day by Day, sung by Larry Stevens. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for our feature attraction tonight, we are going to offer a mystery melodrama entitled Murder at the Lone Palm, or Her Husband Asked for Some Wine, So She Gave Him Both Barrels. <laughs> the scene opens at the Palm Springs Police Station. Police Captain O'Benny is in his office behind closed doors, grilling a suspect. Curtain. Music. Now listen, you You're dealing with Captain O'Benny this time And I want to warn you Anything you say will be held against you Now you're accused of robbing the post office Taking up a train Stealing the hammer steve diamonds And then you boldly held up the First National Bank And killed the cashier Now confess You did it, didn't you? No Okay, you can go <laughs> Peter said yes, I'd have hung them. <laughs> Nobody puts anything over me. There's the phone, Captain. I'll get it. Hello, Palm Springs Police Station and Date Shop. <laughs> Captain O'Benny speaking. What? Yes, we have some with the stuffing in the middle and the walnut on top. <laughs> oh, you want the walnuts in the middle and the stuffing on top? We're out of those. Try the city hall. <laughs> Goodbye. O'Hara's. Yes, Chief. 
You arrested two fellows last night. I want you to stop filling this jail with crooks. You understand? Well, I got to do something with them. During the height of the season, this jail is for tourists. <laughs> I'm getting $12 a cell, American plan. <laughs> you catch crooks during the summer. Morning, Morning Chief. Chief. Hiya, man. How are things? A lot of drunks on my beat. A lot of drunks on my beat, too. Well, what do you know? Pickle beats. <laughs> <laughs> Cut it out, O'Harris. I'll take it. Palm Springs Police Station and Date Shop. O'Benny speaking. Hello, Chiefy. This is Missy LaRue at the Lone Palm. Yes, yes. What is it, Miss LaRue? Well, get a good grip on your badge. My husband has just been murdered. Oh, he has, eh? Do you know who murdered your husband? No. Have you got any ideas? Well, now that he's dead, yes. <laughs> All right, Miss LaRue, I'm coming right over. Okay, Chiefy, and bring a half a pound of dates. We always do. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Come on, man, Mitzi LaRue's husband has been murdered, and I'm gonna find out who did it, or my name ain't... I'll take it. Palm Springs Police Station and Date Shop. Captain O'Benny talking. Oh, Mr. Benny, I'm here with the owner, and you can have the house for $40,000. 40000 eh? Well, I might be interested. However, I'd have to... Talk fast. The termites are spreading mayonnaise on the telephone. <laughs> well, that settles it. I don't want it. Goodbye. Now, come on, man. Let's go. And we'll find the murderer of Missy LaRue's husband, or my name ain't... All right, men, here we are at the Lone Palm. Say, this is a pretty classy place, isn't it? It certainly is. Look at that swimming pool. How about it, Chief? Why not? Oh, boy, that felt good. <laughs> All right, come on, man. We got a mystery to solve. This is Miss LaRue's bungalow right here. Come in. Hello, Miss LaRue. I'm Captain O'Benny. I'm here to solve the murder of your... Wait a minute. Where's your husband's body? In the backyard. Was he killed in this hotel room? Yes, but checkout time is 3 o'clock. <laughs> Tell me everything you know about this crime. I don't know anything. I was just sitting here popping my bubble gum. You didn't hear a shot? No, I really pop it, Pop. <laughs> well, come on, O'Harris. Let's look around this room for clues. Come on, keep moving. Keep moving. Stevens, come that's on. the body. <laughs> now, come on, O'Harris. Let's go. Hey, hold... Chief, look, there's a gun on the table and it's still smoking. A smoking gun, eh? What do you got to say to that, Miss LaRue? My gun's been smoking lucky strikes for nine hours. That's not what I mean. <laughs> Now, listen, men, she's a pretty smart dame. So let's give her the... Hey, Chief, Chief, the doorknob's moving. There's someone in that closet. Where? Right there. You're right, Wilson. Stand back, everybody. We'll get him out of there. Now, come on. Come on out of that closet or I'll shoot. Don't shoot. Don't shoot. It's me, Fulton. Oh, the real estate man. <laughs> are you the murderer? Well, what do you think I am with this knife in my hand? The man who came to dinner? <laughs> Oh, then you're the one that killed Mitzi LaRue's husband. Yes, I did it. I did it, and I'm glad. All right, then come clean. Tell me, why did you do it? I'll tell you why. He was the toughest customer I ever had, that's why. I offered him a house for $70,000, and he didn't buy it. Mr. Fulton. Then I came down to $60,000. He still said no. Then fifty. Then forty. Then thirty. And he kept saying no, no, no. Suddenly, something within me snapped. It was driving me mad. Mr. Fulton. I went crazy. So I took out my gun and let him have it. Bang, 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 bang. Mr. Fulton. <laughs> I'm glad I did it. Glad I did it. And I'll do it again. I'll do it to anybody who refuses to buy a house. Mr. Fulton. <laughs> I tried to sell you a house, didn't I? <laughs> but you, you kept tormenting me. Mr. Fulton. No, you kept saying. No, no. I came down from 70000 to 60000 to 50000 to 40000 but still you said no. Mr. Fulton. Now you're going to buy that house or I'll... Chief, Chief. Don't worry, I'm armed. Have you got a gun? No, a pen. Where do I sign? 
Right here on the dotted line. There is no dotted line. There is now. <laughs> oh, yes, it's on my chest. There you are. The house is mine. Thank you, Mr. Benny, and goodbye. Oh, Miss LaRue. Yes? You can tell your husband to get up now. We've made the deal. <laughs> well, how do you like that? He tricked me into buying that house. All right, men. I've got a house now. And I'll get those termites out of there, or my name ain't... <laughs> You know that house you just bought from me? Yes. Well, I can get you $200,000 for it. $200,000? Who in the world would pay that much? The termites. They're putting up a dollar apiece. <laughs> well, let them have it. They've got most of it anyway. Good night, folks. <laughs>